This is so weird. I asked on my Instagram story, should I go back to dark hair? Or keep my light hair and you know what on a whim i was like one day i was just doing my makeup but i was like i want to do dark hair again and you know what it's like dark dark because i bleached my hair and i knew for a fact that it's gonna fade anyway so i was like let me just go a little bit darker and we'll go back to like a more mid-tone darker color if that makes sense anyway this is actually closer to my natural hair color anyway so it shouldn't be too weird anyway hello it's me edward hey i haven't done a get ready room so so long and i miss just sitting here talking to you guys if you didn't already know me constantly talking about oh i want to do people's makeup blah 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 um, I'm doing it now. In collaboration with Bounce Cafe, I'm doing Bounce Beauty. Uh, there is an Instagram page that we have, so I'll put it down below if you want to go follow it. Currently, we're only doing it every Tuesday, which is actually the cafe's day off. So we'll do it during that day, but... At the time of this video, we're taking reservations for March. There's two packages. Package A, where I'll do your personal color. It's not the full, full thing, but it'll give you like a basic idea of what your personal color is. And also, it helps me for the second part, which is to do your makeup using colors that will suit you and in whatever style that you want. So that's package A, that's 200,000 won. And then package B is just the makeup part. So that one is 150,000 won. If you want to book a session with me, currently we're only doing in Seoul, obviously. I do want to take this overseas, back, like to America or whatever, but currently we're doing in Seoul. So if you're in Seoul, hop on over. It's been really fucking fun. There is a lot of new, would you? MBTI, isn't this so cute? Girl, and she's spilling over into the beauty space. So I'm gonna be trying a bunch of, not a bunch of, but just like some new products that I picked up. I have been on this shit, bitch. I got it from Daiso. So it's like, I think it was either 3,000 or 5,000 won, but this is the Ipkin and, Ipkin and, oh my God, is that a rip, is that a Roman ripoff? There's three different primers they have, and this is their moisture, their personal moisture primer. Again, personal color, MBTI girl. The cream girls, they love to categorize themselves, so. It's the same in the West though, like with zodiac signs and all that. People are like, what's your sign moon rising? I don't know my sign or moon rising. I, you guys know I'm not a huge fan of primer because I feel like it just makes my skin drier, especially for dehydrated skin, but this one is actually kind of popping off for me. I know like sticky tacky primers are really popular in, by the way, this headband is from one of the people that did the Bougie Bounce Beauty. It's from Keelan, so shout out to Keelan. <laughs> what was I fucking saying? It smooths out the skin, but it doesn't have that silicone. It literally just feels like a serum. It kind of makes the skin like a little bit tacky, but it's not like I've tried those sticky tacky primers before and they're cute at first and it gives you the feeling like my foundation is going to stick really well. But at the end of the day, I feel like the foundation just looks dry. And I feel like I've heard this from other people as well, where They've tried sticky primers or whatever, but they just end up looking dry and nasty at the end. I remember a long, long, long time ago, if, you're, if you've been into K-beauty for a long time, there was this like jelly sticky primer that came out a long time ago that was so popular, I just could just never get into it. I tried to force myself to like it, but it just didn't work for my skin. My favorite Johop, my favorite combination these days has been this primer with my go-to Revlon foundation. These work amazing together, but I'm gonna be using a new Etude House Fat Wall kind of new. This is the Etude Double Lasting Vegan Cover. However, they came out with like this new, I don't know if it's a repackaging or um, reformulation, but uh, this is their new version. The thing is, I bought two of these colors yesterday in really fair colors. This is my skin tone, 23N1 Sand. I wanted lighter colors for my kit because girl, she was not prepared. I had a lot of really fair skin girls come up and you would think doing K-Beauty like, oh, there's a lot there's a lot of really, you know, light skin tones in, you know, K-Beauty foundation. Girl, they were too dark on them. So I picked up a bunch of different, uh, really, really, really fair foundations. There's like a little section there where I, it, was, it was like between my color and the really fair one. So I got, this one and another color from this one. So this is not gonna be my foundation color, but I did want to try this. So if it looks too fucking light on me, that's why. Suffice to say, this foundation, the formula is amazing. It's so good for if you do need a little bit of coverage, but your skin is more on the dry side, but also, I don't know, your skin just tends to become really sensitive to super powerfully long wearing high coverage foundations. I feel like with this one, as high coverage as it is, it is quite more um, almost like gentle on the skin, I feel like. But throughout the day, it kind of, not fades away, but it kind of just like wears really pretty. It doesn't look dry and cracked like a lot of other foundations can be. Yeah, this is way too light for me. And I'm using one of these Picasso sponges. When I was in Olive Young yesterday, I don't know. I mean, I'm familiar with makeup. Like, I know what I want. I know what I need. Uh, if I'm looking through stuff, rarely do I really ask for help from 
staff. And when I was picking up this foundation, all of it is so weird. Like they'll keep some items like in the little thing, the little display, so you can easily just pull it out. But there's some where you have to like ask for it because they have, it's sort of like the drawers underneath. I saw I was like, oh, I want to try this. I want to pick this up for my kit. And oh my god, that would not be in any way my kit. I was just pulling it from the, the display. It's also on the very top too, so I could literally just like see it. I could pull it out. I guess is the way I was like really shuffling through the colors because it came in like this sort of packaging because it was like a special set like a promotional set for only at olive young it comes with this little mini um cushion where you can pump some in here and take it with you to touch up throughout the day i guess the way i was like shuffling through all that stuff i looked like i didn't know what i was doing because the girl was like i don't know for me I, I always have my headphones in i could see the girl come up to me and say something to me in my head i was like i feel like the headphones is a good indication that i want to be left alone <laughs> she was like really lingering there so i was like eh? i was like she's like ah <laughs> it was the ah <laughs> I don't know, some of these Olive Young staff really want to be like, Oh, if you need something, please let us know. But right when you fucking need them, they're nowhere to be found. They really be lingering around the aisles that don't have a lot of people. They should be in the area with like the makeup because obviously most people are going to Olive Young for makeup. So they, they, you know, there's people that need help. But they always be lingering around like the fucking, I don't know, like the body lotion section or whatever. Every few minutes they have to say like, Oh, if you need something, please let us know. But girl, you can tell they don't want, <laughs> they don't want anyone interacting with them. in the case where I do need something from like in the drawers, girl, they're not, they're nowhere to be found. They are nowhere to be found. Obviously there's not a lot of really dark foundations in Korea that I can get. There is like Fenty and stuff. I don't really like that formula. Another thing I noticed doing a lot of people's makeup for Balance of Beauty is that a lot of people have dry, dry skin. I literally had to ask my sister to ship a lot of like Revlon. Cause you know, I love, I fucking love this foundation. This is the combination oily one. And there is a combination dry one, but this combination oily one, I feel like works for any skin type. Girl, I went on Amazon, I picked a bunch of like the really dark and medium colors, sent it to my parents' house and had her send it to me. Just so I have darker foundation colors in my kit. One thing I've really noticed with my skin as well is you'll often see me using powder, right? But my skin actually doesn't really like powder because it just causes more dehydration in my skin. And for me, I use powder because I like the look of extremely matte, just like flat skin on me. Uh, but I do notice that this combination of that primer and like, especially my Revlon foundation, I don't really need to use powder all over. I can just put a little bit right here because I do need to sit under my eyes and kind of here just to cover my pores. Doing it that way, my skin, it looks a lot better after I wash all the makeup off at the end of the day because if I do use heavy, girl, back then when I would be using like the, doing the baking, my skin at the end would be like red because it was just so dry. And a lot of redness, if you have a lot of redness around your skin, a lot of that can be caused by dehydration um, and lack of like inside moisture. And so powder obviously is not helping that. Next, I'm going to cover kind of like any residual, like, like my, my beard area and my dark circles with just my Malu Wilsu. I met this guy named Daniel recently, um, a friend of Sean's. He also wants to start a podcast too. He invited me as one of his guests. Turns out he's like a, he studied psychology in college, right? Before we filmed the video, obviously we met up and had to have dinner. Not many people ask me this, but he asked me like, oh, can you tell me about how you grew up in your life? And I was like, I guess. And so I did. <laughs> and the way he read me, he was like, oh, that explains a lot. I was like, what? He's telling me about how the way i mean this is it's pretty most people know that depending on how you grew up as a child it really affects the way you, you are as an adult and i knew this of course but the way he read me to a t he like knew me the thing is i'm so introverted but i don't know I i've said this before on the double d podcast how i used to be much more extroverted and to be honest doing balanced beauty has been so much fucking fun because i get to interact well right now it's currently mostly obviously just subscribers because i've only really posted about it on my instagram but it's just been really fun for me being able to interact with all because in my daily life i don't really meet many people i'm still pretty shy but knowing that they're subscribers it almost gives me the feeling of like it's not as weird to me. It's not like a completely unknown person. So I've been having a lot of fun doing Bounce Beauty because I get to meet all these different types of people. Obviously people come from so many different, you know, backgrounds and all that. And hearing why they came to Korea and shit like that. So Daniel did say like, it's good for your personality type to kind of get out and interact with people. And thinking about that, if I'm not doing Bounce Beauty, like where the fuck would I go to interact with people besides, you know, my friends I already have. Bounce Beauty has given me an opportunity to interact with other humans and it's actually been quite enjoyable. Also my egg is higher, filler, the bruising all went away right i don't know for some reason doing the egg is higher my eyes appear more like 
that sometimes. And another thing is that ever since I did my hair, I colored my hair like a few days ago, but because of the dark hair, I mean, it's gonna, like I said, it's gonna fade, but right now, the dark color is so heavy on my coloring that um, I almost do have to wear eye makeup. Otherwise, I do look like... <sighs> Uh, honey, it's been a long time since I've hit pan on anything, but this is the this Ipkin powder. There's a green one and a lavender one. This shit is so good. It generally comes off as just like transparent on the skin, but if you do have extra redness that you need to cover, this helps a little bit. I'm just using this on my brows real quick because I didn't do my brows. I'm just gonna take my little Ondeen palette and this brush from Too Cool For School. I really like this brush. I got this on Coupang. Define Blender, so I think it's good for here, but I love me a good, like, well-drawn-in nose contour, but these days I just... You don't care. I just tap it on the sides of the nose where I want to, like, pinch it in a little bit. And one thing I've been loving to do lately is actually right here this kind of I'm, I'm basically hugging like the natural brow bone that i have right here and I, I don't know i like the way that it looks especially on days where i'm we not wearing a lot of makeup you know, my eyes just seem more deep there's this type of eye shape that i describe as final fantasy eyes because if you look at final fantasy characters a lot of them look very like half european half asian because they'll have like really low brow bones and deep set eyes, which is not, it's not a feature exclusive to Eurocentric features, but they'll have the really low brow bone and deep set eyes, and then they'll have Aegis hair. A lot of the girls that I've been doing makeup on, they kind of have those eyes. Um, I finally fucking finished Final Fantasy 16, including the DLC. A girl, it's been a wild fucking ride. Um, I've been really observing their faces and they do kind of have that kind of eye shape, so. This brush from fucking Tag from Daiso, the vegan contour brush, so good for both blush and for contour. Contour, good young. Just tapping it here. You know what? While we're at it, let's also do the highlighter. I'm going to use the little ear in here. I bought this Morphe brush from Ulta when I was in the States last time, and I was like, oh, that's a cute little brush. I might want to use it. I never used it. But lately, honey, I've been using it. I tend to often just use a really flat, small brush to put my highlighter in. It comes off really harsh, but it's the Morphe V111. But the way it diffuses highlighter onto the skin you could probably also use this for blush but because the bristles are so fluffy it really distributes the product and gives you a really soft focused highlight rather than like a harsh harsh concentration of color so oof it's been 30 fucking minutes finally get into the MBT I. These are from Etude House and it's their new, well, they're called Etude now. I think they're trying to make it more modern. So they changed their brand name to just Etude. I think it's so cute. It's called MBT I, but it stands for My Best Tone Eye Palette. And apparently this is the extroverted one. And this one is the Eagle Eye Gel. Oh my God, this is so crazy. I can't even explain this kind of like wordplay, but anyway, this is the extroverted palette and this is the introverted palette. Obviously, I'm an introvert and I'm cool tone, so this would make sense for me, but I almost kind of want to go into this one because uh, actually, no. Whenever I try something fucking new, I'm going to fuck it up. This set is exclusive to all of them. It comes with like this. <gasps> that is so cute. Hold up. There's this little pin, a little, I'm guessing, phone strap. And this adorable little heart. I don't know if it's a necklace or like a bracelet. Now the really interesting, ugh, it also comes with this fucking brush, but these brushes are trash, bro. Like, like what would I even use this for? This is what the palette looks like. And the whole thing with these MBTI palettes is that the bottom row here, you can actually pull out because they're magnetized. I believe this is a blush. I want to say it's a blush, but it does come with an extra two eyeshadows. So you can kind of pick and customize and choose whatever you want, but... Mm, so, it, okay, so this big one is a blusher. You know what? So we get a little bit of like harmony in in the look. Because I'm using this as a blush, if I use it as a base as well, it should be able to, it should connect the look together. I'm going to use a little bit of this P. Louise uh, base to go under my Egusar. the shade to deepen that shit up. I'm actually gonna mix these two. Just so it's not completely like lavender or pinky. It'll be more like a rosy, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna mix these two colors. I am curious, I do wanna use this um, on my lids. I love how the concept of these palettes is that, oh, this palette is for the introverted cool tone girlies and the other palettes for the extroverted warm tone girlies. These colors, I feel like people in Korea would associate more with like, more like outgoing almost. Of course, we gotta use shimmer, honey. We gotta use shimmer. This one, just on the part of the lid that sticks out the most. I do also want to take the really bright ivory shade and use that on the inner part of my eye here. As you can see, I didn't really do much on the underside, so now I'm gonna do the same, basically the same colors I used as the base. Line my under lash line. We gotta use the uh, the glitter, the really chunky one right here. That is so. Oh my god. Ah. Okay, I'm gonna use this as a uh, blush. There's so many different ways you could do blush, but for me, I feel like just putting it here looks the most... Actually, hold on. Hold on. I need to go in one more time with a little bit of concealer. Because I do... But the redness around right here tends to crop up for me quite badly. I'm just gonna go in real quick again to really make sure that redness right here is covered. If you have a lot of redness in your skin like me, or you have more of a yellowy undertone, blushes like these lavender blushes are perfect for you because anything more orangey or more yellow will just make the redness in your skin look worse and will just look more orange on your skin. I want to connect it a little bit up to my eyes. Igari. I noticed Igari blush doesn't look good on me. Like the drunk blush, the one you put like around here, looks the best on people with more square or larger faces. It makes the face look smaller. So for me, that's why I like to keep my blush like here. As a blush, this isn't really that great. It's too subtle for me, which, you know, could be a good or bad thing. Okay, you guys, I found this lip product and I thought it was crazy. I was like, they made a lip color like that? You would never see that K-Beauty. You guys know I'm obsessed with, uh, when I do glossy lips, my NYX. This is Milky Gloss, the discontinued one in Cookies and Milk. I like to use this as a base for my glossy lip colors because you see how gray it is? My lips are so red, I need to, I mean, I can use foundation, but I love the combination of this under any stronger color lip tints or lip glosses because it really tones it down. It, I don't know, I just like that look. I was like, oh, I want like a velvet matte version of that. And honey, I, f I found it. I got this from Hemico Lab. If you want like really trendy, like not just the typical Etu, you know, day chic, all that, like trendy, trendy stuff, go to Hemico Lab. I think they do global shipping now. So this is also where I get these AOU lip jelly things. This is the new matte version, which I'm gonna use, but this is from Achi. Oh, Achi, what the fuck? Okay, so the logo is an H, obviously Achi, but the written brand name is Achi. Blur Tint in number one, Daily. I think that's crazy that they call it Daily. And there, there's only two colors. There's Daily and then there's Lively. Daily is literally the straight up fucking like... <laughs> like... <laughs> I look like I jumped into a pool of ice cold water. <laughs> Lively, on the other hand, is just like a very muted whitish pink. So on my lips, it really just looks like a really pale pink. Anyway, the star of the show right now is Miss Daily because I love using this as a base for any of my matte stuff because it gives me that really like soft, like, uh, like the kind of lips you would see on the product page. Because my lips are so red, any color on top is going to look like stronger of a color. AOU, as you guys know, the brand started by Stacy's sort of like previous makeup artist. Her pot jelly things, honey, she, they, she started a trend of just like pot type like glossy lip tints or lip colors. And she came out with these floofy bombs, the floofy matte bomb in four different colors. And this is a texture I've never seen in other, I know there's like lip muds and shit like that, like from Chinese brands, but this one is literally straight up. This is a brand new one. There is like a plastic protector. This is what it looks like, but it's like this really strange, like fluffy, moussey texture. It's giving Maybelline mousse <laughs> foundation, but it's actually really quite, Pigmented, I think. That one was number three, Cotton Bomb. So we've got a good range of warm and cool. I did already put this on top, so if I use one of the lighter shades, it's gonna look too light. So I will use one of the deeper shades. It's number four, Cold Bomb. That's what it looks like. 
and obviously this one is more for the cool tone worlds. And I literally just apply this with a uh, either a flat concealer brush or lip brush or I, my fingers or one of those like silicone squishy fingertip brushes. But if you want like literally like Photoshop blurry looking lips in real life, this shit will give it to you. Especially on top of that H lip tint that already has like this really velvety soft like blurring effect. So this in tandem with that, honey. Yeah, yeah. You do want to make sure though that you keep that plastic protector in there, the airtight seal thing, and you close it every time you use it because this type of formula will dry out on you quickly. So you need to be careful. AOU also does have a new mascara that I bought for my kit, but I wanted to show it to you guys because this is the All Day Mascara in Long Lash. And they do have a volume version, but I don't really use volume mascaras. I want to show you how tiny this, the bristles on this are. That's so pretty. And I didn't even curl my lashes. <gasps> Takoman. Does that show you anything? <laughs> I have really straight downturn lashes and even just a little bit, almost kind of curled them up a little bit. Okay. Oh. All right. Here's a tip. I do have dehydrated skin, but with dehydrated skin, you can get oil in some parts of your face, especially here. Use a tissue to blot away any excess oil from your skincare and your makeup. And you need to do this in order to get really long lasting base makeup throughout the day. When I do people's makeup, I always send them off with a pot of the lip color I used. And then I also give them Kleenex tissue to blot their face. You can buy oil blotting sheets, but I feel like it's such a waste of money and they're too tiny. This, you can do your whole face with the one little tissue and it's much cheaper. And if you can get the oil that pops up first, that will keep your foundation from cracking and getting all like cakey looking. The first bit of oil that comes out within the first like 10-ish minutes, that's really important to take away. Okay. <sighs> that <laughs> it looks so weird. Ugh. It actually doesn't look so bad now. It still does kind of look like a wig. <laughs> Off camera, I did add a little bit of extra uh, shading on, on my egg this high. And also I took some of this darker color from the palette and kind of added some shading with that on the outer corner instead of doing eyeliner. I'm pretty happy with the final results. Oh my God, it doesn't help that my fucking bangs are in the way. <laughs> Does it make look like, does it look like I'm kind of balding? So pretty. Mm. These are definitely very pink colors. So I feel like this palette would look great on light summers and winters because this combination of bright pinks here can look a little bit pastel and a little bit whitish like and ashy on certain skin tones. Uh, but if you're just trying to go for like a very pink, girly, pink, pink look, then this would be a great palette. If you find that the pinks are too bright, you might want to tone them down using some of these like more toned down colors. But to be honest, I feel like if you are, even if you are warm toned or whatever, um, and you do want to try a pink look, you can still kind of use this palette, especially the little add-on shadows because these do lean more warm toned. So again, if you are interested in getting your personal color slash makeup done by me, uh, I will leave a link down to the Bounce Beauty account down below and uh, I'll see you around. Bye.